Amba waste mitagi api. <clears throat> Mito aja. Leslie Ann Wilson. Matoska. Oyadi. Nakono oyadi. So what I said is, um, hello my relatives. My name is Leslie Ann Wilson. I'm from White Bear. I'm Nakota, Nakota Oyadi. That means Nakota people. Right now we're working on putting together, we're learning as much as we can right now and sitting on a council of um, grandmothers um, reclaiming our um, indigenous um, birthing methods and teachings and all the teachings that go along with womanhood and to do with families. It started off with midwifery, just kind of in doula training, and it's way more than that. So it's, we never named it yet. We are just calling ourselves like indigenous birthing. We're working with all age groups, right from younger, like the children, all the way to the grandparents. It's for family and more targeting the women to um, have healthy babies and healthy families because the women are sort of the backbone of the family. And so it's for the women to um, feel confident and to um, empower them to take back their own sovereignty over their own bodies by... Um, birthing their babies and having more of a say instead of just the way it is now. Um, the doctor kind of ties everybody up to the bed and, you know, it's not very, um, it's not very friendly and it's not a very um, good experience for a lot of Indigenous women. And this is something that we always took care of before. We're um, hoping to accomplish healing, empowerment for our women and our children. We're hoping to eventually, hopefully, have a birthing center, um, family center, somewhere where people know they can go with their everyday things that come up. Like if your baby's sick or your little girl's starting her moon time or, you know, just different things that are coming up. Or your grandmother, maybe she's getting old and she's getting ready to leave this earth. You know how you how we can help our women um, raise strong families again. Well, myself, I work in... Um, Every month I do a full moon ceremony, which was passed to me by my mother. And I went to um, Bemidji, Minnesota to meet up with Doreen to learn more about it. Because I, I wanted to know what it was all about. Because I have relatives from Turtle Mountain in um, North Dakota, but they were, they kind of lost their, the teachings about it. And so I wanted to know, I guess from the source, where it came from, Medewin. So I went there and... So I offer a um, full moon ceremony. I offer um, coming of age for girls. And um, counsel, like circles counseling. And sometimes women will contact me. Like if they'd lost a baby or something, I help them to go through that as well. So it's just a lot of things to do with a woman's life. I would say success is people doing doing things with it. Like, um, for instance, the little girls would start their strawberry fasting and then at the end they'd graduate from the strawberry fast and I have met a few girls who said that it was like life-changing for them.
like they were kind of going down the wrong path, like, you know, temptations and whatever. And, and then after that, they totally had um, a lot more confidence in themselves and the choices they were making. So it helped that way. And um, we don't have, like, certification or anything like that. It's kind of like you do what you can, like, and you... We would like to see all of our people be back on a good road again. All of our people who are struggling in life right now, it would be nice to see them all back on a good path again, a spiritual journey and uh, healthy families. It's pretty high now and it is increasing because all of us are kind of kept pretty busy um, there's a lot of um, teachings that go with it so you have to kind of start from the beginning and go like in little steps because like, you'll have an overload if you try to learn everything at once so that's what we're um, finding that it's very busy and um, there's so many problems in the world our kids are faced with nowadays like for instance Drug abuse, it's so rampant and so um, deadly, like scary, that um, we need to do something. And as mothers and grandmothers, we're the ones that will stand up to this and say, we want our children to live. So I think it's just um, everywhere we go, when the women speak, people are listening now. I guess one of the problems we had in the beginning was a lot of, um, I don't know how to say this, but um, a lot of people would just want to come to a class and then take off with it without actually living that life or following the grandmother teachings. Because that's something that we have to do is we can't we can't not follow the grandmother teachings. There's protocol. So I think that was one of the things that we had a hard time at. Not a hard time, but we had to really make it clear that um, you have to um, do those things. And it might take a long time to actually get to a comfortable place where you could work with people. Yeah, so not to take anything for granted, I guess, just to get people involved. And then, of course, money. There's lack of funds, of course, when we want to do something. There's always that everywhere, every program. Every, anything to do with our, our people, all of a sudden there's no money <laughs> all the time. So, And I think... um. Another thing is we're struggling to keep we're struggling to keep it at that level as a grandmother teaching so that <clears throat> our people aren't going to lose this because a lot of times you share your information and then somebody will come along and just you know take off with it and then you have all these people that are doing like way out there stuff. Like, I'm just going to give you an example, like Sedona or somewhere like that. You know, they wrote a book and all of a sudden, you know, people were getting hurt. And we don't want that to happen. So we're really um, strict about it and um, we take it very seriously. My perspective would be learning from the land and learning um, skills that are going to help you and your family survive and be at peace and one, and one with the earth. And um, giving kids the chance to experience that. 
because we learn by experience. For a long time, our people, <coughs> and from no fault of their own, it was through the residential school experience and everything like that, the foster care experience, they had no clue. You know, they walked away from those places feeling lost and broken. And so I think that it's really important that we give them, the, our children, the truth and help them be really strong and proud of who they are. Take care of the children are the, are the future leaders. They're, the, they're our future. Take care of our children. Take care of our earth. Like our water and all the land, all the beings on the land, to take care of those things so that our children and our grandchildren will always have that. I, what I do tell my ch grandchildren, and I'd like it to be carried on in our, our family, is where we come from. And um, like the struggles that we had getting getting to um, where we come from. And I'd like them to learn how to um, take care of themselves on the land and tell them stories about the land. So when my kids were little, I used to take them out snaring. And my nieces and nephews, I used to take them snaring rabbits, fishing, like snaring fish. And I'd teach them about the animals and I used to like doing that and teach them how to cut the fish and make dry meat, stuff like that, just so that they had that experience and they knew. And I'd tell them, if you have this, you'll always be able to take care of yourself. There's one teaching I'd like to share, and it's about how you carry yourself when, um, when, you're, but when you're first born, you're a baby, you need help to do everything. You get carried, you get dressed, somebody feeds you. Um, you kind of like play a lot and you learn about the world that way. And then as you go through that childhood stage, that's when you're exploring the world. And then when you get to the teenager stage, you're, um, we don't have to, we don't say teenager, but to that place where you're, the change starts happening where you go through your passenger rights. Um, that's when um, the young people need help, just like a baby again, because it's a transition. So you transition there. And then that they're adults. And then they're still going to need help when they're young adults because they never, they never did this before, right? And so, and then when they get old enough, that they'll look after their elders. And so it's kind of like a circle of life, the whole circle, and it repeats itself over and over. And I tell my kids that and my grandchildren, and I think my grandchildren, they totally got it, like right away. And um, just to look after your body, be conscious of what you put into your body, like eating, drinking. Be conscious of that so that you'll be leading a healthy life. That's something I always teach my children and grandchildren. And something I'd like them to teach their grandchildren. To take care of yourself, take care of whatever is around and to share. Like, don't let anybody go hungry like don't my kids won't eat in front in front of people like unless there's enough for everybody like that so I think those are really important and the sharing is something that's very universal so we share everything like we share our our food our home sometimes we share our teachings, we share, you know, whatever we can. I do 
I do some some ceremony um, teachings. I teach this all the time. Like it's just a part of me. So it's something that just comes naturally and I go around and talk about it and end up with the same same type of people that want this and we always end up um, teaching the kids. And there's a million ways to teach kids and have fun. What I'd really like to see is for our indigenous people. They're the experts for them to be asked the questions instead of us sharing with somebody and then they take it and they teach it but it's not part of their life and so that's what I'd like to see is for our people to be teaching these things like wholeheartedly and in every domain like physically, mentally, emotionally and to to be able to um, walk in both worlds, you basically need survival skills and like something that kind of drives you. So our people were always really hard workers, like very hard workers, and um, we always looked after things to make sure that nothing would go wrong, and just for the love of our kids. And so for Indigenous education, that's what I'd like to see is more um, community. Not just the, the education system, the school, but the community coming in to the school and helping with the education of the children because that's their school so that they can own it and use it and, and some people have real creative ways of doing things so I think it'll turn out really good if we if we do that and just stick to it which is what a lot of people are doing now they're starting to have like outdoor education lodges and you know they have lodges for different um, teachings there's people that come and get um, the kids at in the spring to go do help help out at the sun dance, you know, like they're they're getting that experience. So I think that eventually I'd like to see us be able to do those things and not to be afraid of losing our language, losing our way.